This is Professor Bluestein. She runs our internship program here at CSUN and she is an awesome professor. Um, do you kind of want to like talk about your background before you go into the resume and cover letter? Yeah, um, I, I will. Um, so I had about 17 years as a uh, reporter, uh, 14 years of that at the LA Times, and I also worked at the Daily News and a paper in Simi Valley that does not exist anymore. It's part of the um, Ventura County Star now. It got, got gobbled up. Um, so I have a lot of experience in local newspapers. And I had two internships when I was an undergrad at CSUN. Uh, one was at that paper in, um, in uh, Simi Valley that ended up becoming a full-time job, my first full-time job. Um, and I had one more semester to go at CSUN. It almost killed me um, working 50 to 60 hours at that newspaper and taking my last three classes, including 498. Um, yeah, we, we've had that class for a very long time. And uh, then after I left the Times at, um, oh, my other internship was at the Herald Examiner, which doesn't exist anymore, but that was so much fun. It was this really cool paper. Um, not, I don't think the word edgy is right, but um, you know, it have, would have big headlines. And it was more the blue collar um, newspaper where the Times was more the white collar newspaper. And uh, it went out of business, I think around 19, um, uh, 90 or 91, but um, I was lucky enough. Uh, it was in a really cool building on Broadway and uh, that was a lot of fun. So um, after I left the LA Times in 2014, of 2004, excuse me, I taught at Pierce Journalism, of course, and at Moore Park and then started teaching part-time at CSUN and then was able to get the full-time job at CSUN. And then Got a master's and got my doctorate in educational leadership also at CSUN. So um, I'm kind of, kind of, uh, I bleed um, red and black. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of weird. I didn't, didn't plan to have my uh, degrees at CSUN, but I just, it just worked out that way. So it's been wonderful. It's kind of cool for me to teach the internship class, which I taught, uh, which I took um, at CSUN um, back uh, when I had the uh, intern ship at the Simi Valley paper. So um, in being the internship coordinator for our department, part of my job is to try to help you all with resumes and cover letters. Because you can take all these classes and but when it comes down to it, if if your resume isn't really quite sharp, you may not get that interview and um, therefore you may not get the internship, you may not get the full-time job. So I like to kind of reach out and share my knowledge and kind of what I call unofficial research. Um, it's not official research, but um, like academic research. But, um, uh, but this is what I want to share with you. And um, so it is your invitation to the interview. That's what your, the resume is. The resume alone is not going to get you the job. Most likely you're going to have to be interviewed, but if the resume doesn't shine, they don't, they're not going to want to interview you. So it, you need to make sure it cuts through the clutter and you want to show how your experience is relevant to the company where you are applying. You're probably just going to have one version of your resume, but if you have different skill sets, you could possibly have two different versions depending on where you are applying. Uh, make sure it is 100% accurate, and that means don't inflate yourself or your accomplishments. Uh, if you um, worked on a project, you were one of many pro people who worked on a project, don't act like you were the only one who worked on the project. The stuff will come back to to get you um, when references are called and, oh, well, you know, she didn't really do that. Um, <laughs> she played a very minor role, um, not a major role. So um, that could be enough that they won't want to hire you. So just be 100% accurate because a half truth is as deceptive as a lie. And that's, they wanna know they're hiring somebody who's honest and about their abilities and their, 
their uh, experience. And it's a marketing tool. You are marketing you. This is all about you, what you have done, but it's not 100% autobiographical of every single thing you've done since high school. Because otherwise, it's just going to be too cluttered. So here's some of the things that you want to do and would be including uh, community service, if you have any. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Um, but de-emphasize and maybe even leave off Greek, meaning fraternities and sororities, religious or political work, unless it's relevant to the job, or I should include, unless you've had a leadership role. If you are merely a member of the XYZ religious club, don't put it on there. I mean, you really, you, it could be a turnoff to somebody who they may think, oh, they're overly religious. I don't think we really want that here. Or, oh, they are a political, different political persuasion than what we usually hire. So um, don't mess it up right from the beginning um, for yourself. And I hate to say it, but fraternities and sororities really don't have a very good reputation with, um, with most of, of society. And um, to say you are just a member of a particular fraternity or sorority, I would absolutely not put it on there. You don't want to make it look like you're a party girl or, you know, that a party guy. Um, but if you did have a leadership role, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, then you could think about putting it on there. Um, so any awards, citations, anything that you've gotten, um, include that in there. It doesn't have to be journalism related, but if you have won some kind of, of award in college, put it in there. Dean's list is a 2.5 or better. That's, that's typically what uh, the qualifications. If you've never been on the Dean's list, don't worry about it. Um, that, <laughs> that doesn't matter um, in our business, thank, thank goodness. Um, yeah, scholarships, definitely. You would definitely put scholarships. You don't have to put the amount of the scholarship. I don't think so. So if it was just a smaller scholarship, that's fine. You won a scholarship. That's great. Um, most people don't win scholarships. So you want to put that on there. Print your resume. If you don't have a printer, find somebody who has one and print it out. Okay. You want to be able to look at this thing and check it off every single fact and figure. I have actually seen the word journalism misspelled on at least one of our students' um, resumes. I just saw it on um, one of the one of the um, 494 students was uh, doing their online portfolio, and journalism was misspelled on their website. Nope, oh, you're out. You're totally out. Um, what? Why is that? Why is not even one little typo allowable on a resume? Anybody? What? What? What kind of message does that send to a potential employer? As someone who's in, you know who's in the business of writing and making sure everything's right and fact checking stuff to kind of show that you're not even yourself checking little things. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't uh, show you it doesn't show that you know you're capable of like checking the little things basically yeah right attention to detail so you know yeah it's everybody's gonna know that you meant to say 2020 and you put 2002 I was like yeah okay we know um, that 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 year is off um, or you put you know 21 year 2100 or some silly thing like that that has year hasn't even happened yet but uh, even if we know it's a typo it just shows you're sloppy and so you've had weeks if not months to work on this resume if you have a typo that is noticeable uh, then how are you going to be on deadline <laughs> um, so yeah exactly so Andre was right um, Savannah says I was Okay, so high school. High school, we really don't put any more. Um, I don't know, I can't recall on this uh, presentation if we're gonna talk about high school, but um, um, 
typically you're not, now that you're in college, you're not gonna talk about high school. I, I just say, unless you were editor in chief of your newspaper or your yearbook, you know, very journalism oriented. Junior ROTC, um, if you did that in high school, but you didn't do ROTC in, in college, I don't know. I mean, it may, it may raise some flags like, okay, well, how come you didn't continue on with it? Um, hopefully you've got some other leadership things, even just one other leadership thing that you can put in college and then you don't need to worry about, about the ROTC. Um, my gut feeling is because it was high school, I wouldn't put it and it's not related to journalism. Um, so Sophia, it depends for you. Um, so you were editor, chief editor of the yearbook. Um, I'm going to say for you, you probably don't need it anymore because you have that internship at ABC seven. So we don't need to go deep in into the past to grab something worth noting. But for those of you who maybe haven't had an internship yet, or you're right now in 110 or 210, or even if you're in the 300 level of classes and you don't really have a whole lot to put on your resume, then you could dip into high school. It, but it's gotta be significant if you were in, if you're gonna mention high school. But Sophia, I, I, my guess is no. You, you know, I think um, earlier when you were freshman or sophomore at CSUN, then you could have, but, but you don't need it anymore. Um, Thank you. Email, you're welcome. Email and upload it as a PDF. Definitely never upload it or email it as a Word doc because somebody could have a different, and you know, maybe an older computer and it's not reading what font you used. You should not be using wild fonts, by the way. Um, that's not a good way to, that's not the way to catch somebody's attention is with some crazy font. Um, going to make it look like you just arrived from Mars yesterday. Um, this is a fairly, um, it, it's a traditional and a very formal, in a way formal and, um, and kind of conservative, business conservative meaning um, document. This is not some razzle dazzle thing, unless you are applying for a graphic design job. Um, so you want to make sure you're using normal fonts, not anything too crazy. There we go, delete reference to high school. And um, yeah, I did mention this, uh, I think, there we go. Uh, every three to six months, I just say update, just try to remember, because sometimes you, you forget something that you won a scholarship or, oh yeah, you know, I was vice president of that club and now I'm president. So you would want to include it. So just try to remember every three to six months, um, one page only. And when I mean one page only, I don't mean itty bitty eight point font, okay? <laughs> um, and there's a real practical reason for that. You want your smallest font, and I don't know that I specified this, but the smallest size font you want on a resume is 11. 12 is even, is better. And there's a very practical reason why. And that is because I hate to tell you all, but once you hit around age 40, uh, even if you wear glasses now, you may very well need to add bifocals to them uh, because the little muscles in our eyes don't work so great after we get into our 40s. And guess who's going to probably be in the position of hiring? People who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s. So you don't want to make it hard. So they're like reading your resume like this um, with this little, little bitty font. Um, if you have to go smaller than 11 point font, you've got too much stuff on your resume. Um, what if my experiences gets more than one page? Okay, well then, um, it's time then to look at it, see if there's some stuff that you should completely remove. So think your priority is journalism or PR related. So anything journalism related, I know I'm talking with RTD and A Club, but if there's any PR people in the room, um, you want it to, journalism related is, is better than you worked in a restaurant, you worked in retail, uh, maybe have one of those jobs on there like one non-journalism job. Um, 
for a long time, I worked in a video store <laughs> back in the day, Tower Video in Sherman Oaks. And I worked there for two years and I had that on my resume for a fair amount of time, probably until I got I maybe my second full-time reporting job because I wanted to show that I could stay somewhere for two years. But eventually that job, a two-year job, went went goodbye because it didn't have anything to do with journalism. So you'll be refining it and changing it. But guess how guess how long um, you have, well, okay, guess how long a potential employer will look at the average resume, whether they're looking at it online or they're looking at it a print version. 10 seconds, three minutes. Now this kind of, you know, varies, but eh, Savannah is probably the closest. Could be 30 seconds, it could be less than a minute. Um, maybe Andre, maybe three minutes. Um, maybe, maybe, but, um, if they really want to look at it, but it's not very much time and it's probably not going to be enough time to read every single thing that's on your resume. It might not be. Um, now, keep in mind, a computer might be reading it initially. So when you upload to a website, it's, there's a good chance that a computer will scan the resume looking for the key words that were in that job description, um, either job or internship um, description. And if those words aren't on there, it's kicked out. So some employers, mostly the bigger ones, that's how they do the initial screening, which it sounds really cutthroat and, and tough, but if they're getting hundreds of resumes for one job, they've got to do something to, to reduce that stack because they can't go through that many resumes. Uh, marketing director on a previous job, should I keep it on there? Mm, maybe, but you got to be careful to not confuse the potential employer thinking, well, does she want to do broadcast or does she really want to do marketing? Hmm. Um, Would photography be more relatable? Photography? I, yeah, if I just... Absolutely. Okay. At no question whatsoever. Photography, that go, actually photography spans everything. So if you're broadcast or you're just print digital or even PR photography, great. That's great to have that on there. If you just took if you took the 350 uh, photojournalism class. Um, I'm not sure about the marketing director. I'd have to see your resume in, in its entirety to know. Okay. My first hunch is probably not because okay. you don't want to confuse them and make them wonder if you're not really sure what you want to do. Um, uh, would you, uh, would work that shows our journalism skills or experience take importance over a job that has a leadership posi position? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I mean, again, it gets to really make a decision like that. I'd have to see and see your resume and compare the whole thing and, and, and know, um, depends on the leadership position. Um, leadership positions are good in clubs or associated students or something just to show that uh, that you can take charge and manage and and work with other people but um, if you don't have any leadership positions I wouldn't worry about it I think the journalism skills are more important than the leadership skills at this point um, because you know you're not going to go in there as an editor you're not going to go in there as you know a, a top executive at some company you're going to start at the bottom you're not going to have leadership um a, a job starting out um now this is what different um sites say and again keep this in mind this um, resumes are subjective to some degree i mean there are certain things you don't want to do but then there are other things, well, one person will say do it, and the next person will say no, don't do it. So it's- Professor Bluestein. 
Yeah. Um, I noticed that Andre did ask, um, how often should we be updating the web or uh, resumes? Yeah, I had said that in our uh, the previous one, every three to six months. Oh, okay. Just in general. Um, and that's just more of a reminder for you so that you don't forget anything that, um, that you might have done. Um, so don't, in, now, so one, one reference uh, that I looked at said, don't include your GPA unless it's a 4.0. Well, I can count on my hand, one hand, the number of, of journalism students who I have seen at CSUN who had a 4.0. Um, so, uh, you know, it's fine, that's normal. You don't need to have super duper duper grades in, in journalism in order to get a job in journalism your employer will know, your potential employer will know that if you've graduated, you had at least a 2.0 or you wouldn't have gotten your degree. Um, so don't worry about your GPA. If it's a 3.5, yeah, put it on there. I think anything lower than a 3.5, no, don't. Don't even, don't even mention it. If they ask you for it on some kind of form, yes, you have, you need to provide it. And they may very well be asking you for your transcript, so they'll see it anyway. But no need to call attention to a GPA that's a 3.1. Um, you know, nothing, nothing bad about that, but you got other more important stuff to talk about on your resume than, than a, a B average um, GPA. Um, so this is just a little comment, not, doesn't have to do with resumes directly, but don't include compromising photos or um, negative comments on social media. Employers will be checking your social media accounts and they will, they want to see how do you represent yourself? How would you possibly rep represent yourself as a, a representative of our company? Um, so if you have photos um, that have a red cup in it, <laughs> photos in a in bathing suit attire, you need to delete those now. Get, get rid of them. Um, and it doesn't mean that you have to be all stuffy and boring, but, um, and, and negative comments too, uh, especially like, you know, oh my God, I'm so burnt out from the semester. Oh, you know, online learning is sucks. No, none of that stuff should be on your social media account. Um, nobody wants to work with a whiner. They, they really don't. Um, your personality and your soft skills come into play big time in the workplace. And if, if you're not a pleasant person to work with, um, that's, that's going to be a problem. Um, don't use your CSUN student email account um, or a personal email account that has an unprofessional name. So ideally, you're going to have a Gmail account that will have your name in it. Um, I'm not big on numbers, like some random numbers, because I think it's harder for people to remember your email address. I would, but, you know, if you have numbers in it, that's okay. But do not put your birth year in your email address. Anybody have an idea why? And it doesn't have anything to do with security or um, cybersecurity, but why, why is it not a good idea to put your um, birth year in? Um, because oh, that's you're going to get older one day. Yeah, right. Hate yeah. to tell you all, but you hit 45 and it's going to get harder to find a job. It, it's really terrible in our society. We don't value older workers as much as we should and as much as older workers are valued in other countries. I'm saying 45, really, really it starts at about 50, um, that the age discrimination and, you know, it's subtle. It's just, it's really subtle. They're not, you know, they're not going to make it blatant. They don't want to get sued. But um, if, if you're creating a Gmail account that will hopefully last you for the next 35 years, however long you're going to be working, um, just don't have that um, birth year in there. So Andre, Andre Kane, um, 419. 
I'm I'm presuming Andre Lopez was taken. <laughs> that was yeah. Well, um, this is like my first ever uh, Gmail that I still keep. It's a relatively clean name. I feel like so I've stuck with it. What's the cane though? That's confusing to me. Oh, uh, that's my middle name, and it's like, yeah, like yeah. I don't know if th that was also like not worrisome, but it's just my name, middle name, and then uh, numbers. Because I'm gonna, I would think if I saw that, I would think Kane was your last name, and it might be a little confusing. I don't know if Andre Kane Lopez would be available. You know, you can out, you can try underscores in there. Um, Andre K. Lopez, that may have already been taken. Um, it's not, it's not bad, but I'd really like to see your last name in there. Um, I did mine, I know it's, you know, some of you might think it's stupid, but I did Bluestein Stephanie at Gmail, because believe it or not, Stephanie Bluestein was taken. Um, and that's not all that common of a name, so I just flipped it. Um, so, but you know, just, just some ideas. Again, you can completely disagree with me on some of this stuff and it's like, okay, that's fine. Um, but here's one that you, that I will hold up. <laughs> Do not use brightly colored paper or any weird fonts. I talked about the weird fonts already. Um, yeah, just don't please. Um, that's not the way to make yourself stand out. Um, it really should be, um, white or maybe, you know, a gray. We're going to look at a few designs here in a minute. But don't do anything all tripped out. Um, it's the content that matters the most. It's not the way it looks. So references. Um, typically, you're not going to put your references on the resume, but you do need to have them, at least some working references in the back of your mind, because you may be asked, asked to provide them at any step along the way in the application process. So choose wisely. It, it really should be someone um, who can talk well about you, um, someone who knows your work, not someone you had for Journalism 110 and you haven't talked to them for two years, they're not going to remember you, sorry, they're just not. Um, if, if you've kept in touch with them, that's a whole different thing. Um, but it should be someone who, who also will get back quickly to um, not someone who takes three days to get return an email. Um, when they are ready, when they're checking references and they're ready to hire, they want to be able to reach people quickly. Um, I've been on the other end of that, um, being asked as a reference, and um, I got back quickly and the person got the job. It was, it was pretty cool how fast it all happened. Um, alert the person in advance that they might be getting a call or an email. Make sure they are reachable. Um, sometimes people may have something personal going on in their life. Um, you know, they may have um, you know, a relative who's um, dying, um, they just can't deal with being your reference at that moment. Um, and so don't take it personally, but it is good to give people a heads up. Um, uh, you know, some professors, they don't answer their email on the break. So, it, you know, unless you would give them a heads up. Um, okay, so I kind of mentioned this. Make sure you've been in contact with them recently. Um, otherwise, choose someone else. Um, it's really awkward for the person being asked to give the reference if they don't really remember you that well. And, and the reference, you won't really shine. Um, it's, I, I'll just tell you that, you won't. Don't put that old fashioned references provided upon request at the bottom of your resume. If you want that job, <laughs> you're gonna cough up the references, okay? It's just like the drug test, okay? If you want the job, you're gonna do the drug test or you're not gonna get the job. Uh, so it's just taking up um, valuable um, uh, space there. Um, it's kind of, it's old fashioned. Um, so in, uh, consider including the references on a separate sheet of paper along with your resume. Uh, you'll have to make the decision whether to do that initially or whether um, you would just give the references when you are asked to give the references. But um, once we get back to living our lives normally, if you go to an in-person interview, 
Um, you should have a copy of your resume with you. They have it already, but it doesn't hurt to have another copy for them that like, you can just pass across the desk. And it's nice to have a copy of, a printed out of your references with their, the name, job title, where they work, and their email and their cell phone. Oh, do you have your references? Oh, yes, I do. Here you go. That's really impressive. You've got your act together. Not like, oh, well, it's not a terrible thing if you say, no, I don't, but you better hustle home and, and email that to them as fast as possible. Don't email it to them two days later. Um, okay, so I'll pause there. Any, I, it's great. You guys have been asking questions in the chat as we've been going. Anybody have questions about what I, oops, what, what I've talked about so far? Um, you know, what not to do, what to do. Um, in regards to the references, and I guess ideally who you would want, I guess you kind of went over it, but would a uh, professors that like have seen your work, would they kind of be the go-to person as far as references? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, definitely. You would not want someone who you had for a lecture class to be your reference. It's got to be someone from the skills classes um, or the, the practicum. So, you know, um, KCSN or Valley View or On Point, um, not your 372 professor, for example. I have a question. Yeah. What's typically the first thing that a recruiter might notice or an employer might notice on your resume? Mm, well, um, we're going to look at some designs in a minute, but they're definitely going to be looking at education when when you are graduating you should have that on there um, if you're still in in school um, and you just say anticipated graduation colon and then the month and the year so don't say spring 2021 because if you're at ucla you're not graduating until june but if you're at csun you're graduating in may you're you're available earlier so you'd want to say may 2021 or december 2020 um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I, they're, they're looking for rel, for skills and experience that is relevant to that job. That's the main thing that, that they're looking for. I have a question. Yeah. I'm a little late. So like in regards to reporting, um, I know that they are, our reporting reel is like our resume. Um, do they still look at the resume oh so the yeah the demo reel versus yeah, the, the demo reel yeah oh yeah they'll still look at your resume absolutely yeah they they just want to see what what do you have on there what kind of experience how many internships have you had your internships are not going to be reflected on your demo reel at all so they want to know have you had internships where did you have them um and do you have a section do you happen to have a section of skills do you have a section of courses that you relevant courses that you have completed that's the kind of stuff it's not going to be on the demo reel at all yeah so you still need a resume absolutely yeah no no doubt about it because i think they're going to look at your resume first and then they're going to look at your demo reel they're, they don't have time to go through even one minute of everybody's demo reel who's applied so they're going to first weed out people who um for whatever reason, don't seem to fit that job description by looking at their resume and then they're gonna go on to the demo reel. So that, hopefully that makes sense. Um, so here's, um, don't worry that you can't read these words. That's not the point. It's just visually, I want you to see what these look like. Um, the one on the left, oops, is the traditional resume and the one on the right is more modern. Now, if, you're do, if yours is in traditional style, that's okay. That's fine, but at some point in your career, you probably will go more for the modern resume, and I'm going to show you some more examples, um, that's more modular. So it has, you know, different little, almost like boxes that, um, little sections that, imagine building Legos, and, and they're all fitting together very nicely, where the traditional, um, it's not really like a letter, but it's not very modular or graphics. 
Um, so for the next several years, you can get away with the traditional, but eventually you would want to go to the modern resume. So this is more traditional, as you can see a little bit bigger. Um, you do not need your street address or city any more. Well, you don't need your street address. You would just want to say greater Los Angeles area or Los Angeles comma. Um, the San Fernando Valley is part of the city of Los Angeles, by the way. Um, so you don't need to say Northridge, California or Silmar, California, just say Los Angeles. Um, I have heard uh, of someone in HR who said that um, sometimes they're looking at resumes and if you live too far away from that job or you, they know you're going to have to take the 405 to get there, they may not, hire, they may not even interview you because they're going to figure you're going to just burn out after two months and quit. Um, takes a lot of effort to go through the hiring process for the employer. It costs them money because time is money. Um, it's a very labor intensive thing. So they want to make sure they do make a good hire. Somebody who can do the job, but somebody who's going to be able to hack it. So they don't want to hear that you live so far away. Now, if you are applying for your first job in Topeka, Kansas, because that's where you um, are going to start your on-air reporting, then you will have available or available to relocate at the top. Absolutely. You'll have Los Angeles, California, but you'll have available to um, relocate. You do not need a home phone number. Just one phone number um, is fine. You don't need to say sell. Just put the phone number. Everybody knows what a phone number looks like um, with the dashes. So that's the traditional um, this is the modern, so you can instantly see the difference. We'll go back real quick. So there, you know, it's just, it looks kind of dull and boring. And here we have, imagine um, drawing a little box around each of these areas. So that's what I mean by modular. You don't need to have this black with the white. If, you, if that's too much for you, it's like, whoa, that's just not my style. That's okay but you're gonna have um, all the different information. Here's the contact information here. They do have the address, but I don't, I say you don't need that. Um, oops, sorry. My mouse is so sensitive. Um, I just barely look at it and it does something. Um, you want your LinkedIn there, but um, you wanna do it so that it will pop up so that the person doesn't have hopefully to, um, sign into their LinkedIn account to see your LinkedIn account. Um, the objective, no, I don't think so. Um, the objective is better once you've had, it's more relevant once you've had some experience. So administrative assistant with six years experience, but um, your objective should not be seeking entry level job, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, okay, we know. <laughs> we know you're seeking entry level. You're just graduating from college. <laughs> you know, um, don't waste space doing that. Instead of the objective, um, sometimes now we're seeing um, summary, a career summary, but you don't need to do that until maybe you've been working five to 10 years. So I would say none of you need the objective right now. You're, you're going to be most likely going to be applying for a particular job. You're not just sending in the resume to have it on file. Um, so that, that's what that looks like. And then I'm willing, I'm happy to send this to Sophia and then you can send it out to everybody so you guys can look at it more closely. Here's just another one. Um, but, you know, it's got some little icons and there's the education and awards and different things that they've done. These are not journalism related. Um, just warning, these are just little samples. Um, here's one with all of that stuff on the right-hand side. So just so you can get a sense of it, they have their initials. Maybe, you know, you like that or you don't like that. Um, as far as your photo being on the resume, that might be more appropriate if you are going for an on-air job, but um, otherwise you don't need your photo on, on the resume. Um, okay, so that's it for resumes. Any other, any questions before I go on to um, cover letters? And there's a question in the chat from Jordan um, saying, can we see a, a journalism related resume? Uh, the only ones I have, they're kind of older. 
Um, if you can just live without the dates, uh, um, if you can um, ignore the dates, hang on just a second here. Mm, let's see. In my collection. Okay, I got something I can show you. So let me stop sharing this. I kind of stopped um, doing this because they're kind of older, but um, okay, so here's one. So you've got education at the top and then journalism experience and then other work experience. Um, you want to keep it really short. Do not go into every single thing. I have seen people say that they worked, um, for instance, on the sundial, but you could apply this to KCSN, that they interviewed people and they wrote stories. It's like, yeah, okay. Um, I kind of get that. Um, you, if you're going to write a story, you're going to interview the person. So don't tell me you interviewed them. Just you're wasting space. Just you, you wrote news and feature stories um that's all we need to know we know what it takes if we're in the business to write a story so don't get too detailed don't get too far in the weeds um i like this one covered education and the general uh, maryland general assembly for this university run wire service um serving 13 daily newspapers so it's a little description if you don't if somebody doesn't know what capital news service is. I like how they used italics for the job titles. They put the employer in bold and then they have the location here. There's a ton of information on this resume and just one page only. Jordan said, would you put bullet point styles when talking about what you have done for your resume? Mm, I'm personally not a huge fan of a whole lot of bullet points. Um, so you could run it together like this, um, different things that you did so you don't need to use bullet points. Here's, um, you know, research stories, trans comma, transcribed recorded interviews and assisted producers and desk editors in the Washington Bureau. So it, you could just, you know, assist, oh, this is a good, you know, this is good for um, broadcast. Assisted crews on publications, dub tapes, checked. See what I mean? Instead of taking all that room and going bullet, bullet, bullet. Um, but it, it depends on the layout. Because if you go with the more modern layout, you may have to do bullet points. Just see see what looks good is, is what I think. But don't, you know, each, task that you do each separate thing should absolutely be something totally different um it it shouldn't be that you know you you're saying two two different things and it's kind of the same thing so they should be really distinct um how would we describe all of our journalism jobs in matador news um i you know if you uh if you uh, hosted the show, you would say that. If you, um, you know, you, enter, you interviewed, whatever you did, just describe it. But every job should maybe have three or four things and that's it. Even if you did more, don't, don't go too crazy with, you know, 10 things that I did at KCSN. Just pick out the, the top three or four things um that that's the most significant and if they are non-journalism jobs do not go into great detail about it please i have seen people tell me like three different thing job tasks being a cashier at target it's like you know i've been in a retail store i kind of know what cashiers do you don't you just say cashier target period that's it you don't need to tell me that you you know you were sweeping the floors and stocking the shelves it, you're just, it's just distracting from everything else that, um, that you have. Hang on just a second. I'm going to, um, uh, oh, okay. Um, I'm just going to look at something real quick. I may have to cancel something that I have at six o'clock because we may go a little bit over. Um, so hopefully this helps. So I can, 
um, before I send it to you, I'll throw some of these examples in there in the PowerPoint because I'm looking now at a different PowerPoint. But does that does that help? Let's see if there's one yet one more. Yeah, so I'll throw this one in there too. I'm adding it for the content, not the design of it, just so you can get an idea of what it, how you would word things. Does that kind of help? Okay, so let me go back to, hold on here. Okay, wait, I wanna stop sharing. Why am I, there we go, okay. Okay, let me go back to the other one. Okay, so any more about resumes? Would we be able to send you our resume and you can kind of give us like a little bit of feedback? After finals are done. Okay. Yeah. Um, I am just like up to here until I, because I, I, you know, I'm on deadline to get the, the grades done. Um, if you want me to take, if you are applying for a job and the deadline is in a few days, send it to me. I'll take a quick peek at it. But otherwise, um, I'll, I can look at it later in December. Um, just because I'm like not even getting everything done at this point that I need to be getting done. Um, so hopefully that that makes sense to you. Um, so cover letters. Okay, so cover letters, one page only and really two or three paragraphs and that's it. That's all you need to be doing. And you are not going to be reciting every single thing on your resume. You're, they have your resume. What the purpose of the cover letter is to focus on why they should look at your resume. Now they may look at the resume first and then the cover letter, so don't, you know, don't worry about that. But um, this is where you can talk about your soft skills, that you are a quick learner, you are curious. That word curious, if you truly are curious, should be in that cover letter. Journalists need to be curious. Um, and that's, so that's super important. Um, so it's more the soft skills that um, you work well on deadline, that you handle deadline pressure well. Some of that stuff can't really be relayed on uh, through the resume very easily. So that's your chance to talk about that. If you have any, um, uh, maybe some gaps in, in your resume, time gaps, um, you know, maybe there was, you had a major illness or there was something that happened and you took a year off college or there's some, uh, something else that you wanna explain in your resume, the cover letter is your chance to do that. So I just want to, you know, kind of point that out to you as well. Um, and be specific to the company um, and the address C. Do not uh, do the cover letter to, to whom it may concern um, unless that's the best you can do. Uh, but at least you would want to say to whom it may concern at NBC4 or hiring manager, NDC4, or news director, if you don't know, I mean, how would you find out that person's um, name if you didn't know? Go to their company website, all that stuff's yeah. usually yeah. there. Yeah, you're a reporter. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're, you're not engineering major, you're a reporter. You, you should be able to find out these people's names. Um, and, you know, look on their website if you need to, God forbid, use the phone and call. Hello, um, I'm sending in a cover letter. Um, should I address it to, um, who, to whom should I address it? And oh, well, yeah, definitely, you know, the news director or whatever title, oh, oh, the person's name. Oh, how do you spell their name? Their name is Sean Smith, okay? So let me show you this one. So you say Sean Smith, and you write it like this. What if Sean Smith Smith spells his name like that? <laughs> um, that's not going to be too impressive. Some people get so mad when their name is misspelled. 
Um, some people don't really care, but it is not impressive to misspell someone's name, especially as a journalist. So yes, S as in Sam, F as in Frank, if you're talking on the phone, um, D and Bs tend to get, so D like David, B like boy. Um, take a few seconds to make sure you have spelled their name correctly. Um, include the address. Um, oops, sorry. I didn't mean to do that again. Uh, yeah, it probably should be in that formal um, business type letter. So where you have, um, uh, so flush left, no indents on the paragraphs, a space between the paragraphs. And then, um, so you have your address and then their address and then dear Mr. Smith. Um, if you're not really sure if it's a man or a woman, um, you're, you're going to stumble on the Ms. or Mrs. or not, you're not going to use Mrs. by the way, you're, um, but you're going to stumble on the Mr. or Ms. So you're going to have Sean Smith or let's say Kelly Smith. Kelly can be a man or a woman's name. Usually it's a woman, but not always. So you're going to have Kelly Smith, NBC4, and then you're going to go, dear, uh-oh, Mr. or Ms. Smith. Um, how would you figure out at midnight whether Kelly Smith was a man or a woman? By Googling or looking them up on LinkedIn? Yeah, definitely. And make sure that, you know, because sometimes if you just Google and you hit photo images, you get all sorts, sorts of people. So make sure you're looking at the right person. But yeah, LinkedIn, absolutely. Googling them can definitely help. Um, so just everything has got to be just perfect. It really does. Um, if you want to make an impression and um, show them you've done your homework. Um, Those are blue team. Yeah. They, there is like this new thing on um, LinkedIn right now that when you search somebody's name, you they can hide their picture. Oh, so I you didn't like, know that. Yeah, until they accept your request. Oh. I don't know if they call it like a friend request, but um, uh, a connect like, right? Or if you're right or your premium, like you have the option to do that too. Yeah, oh. so a lot of my the Disney recruiters that I was working with, they mm -hmm. had their picture hidden until like I was like, you know the friends with them so mm -hmm. I didn't know if they were like a man or a woman because some of them like one of them is named Pam and that could be both Pam Pam's usually a woman but you know you can't assume yeah. so yeah, what you need, so here's the deal call up the company during regular business hours um or you could send an email to some, not to that person, but if you had an email, like a generic, and say, I'm addressing a letter to Pam Smith, um, I'd like to know, should, would that be Ms. or Mr.? They're not going to think you're weird at all. They're going to think be that- rude at all? No, not rude at all. What's okay. rude is to put Mr. when it's really a, a, somebody who it identifies as a female. Yeah. And then, you know, if the person um, identifies as trans or fluid, then maybe you just say, um, if the person says they, they don't identify as Mr. or Ms., then you say, well, um, should I just use their first and last name? So maybe you'll just say, dear Kelly Smith, <laughs> and you won't do Mr. or Ms. Um, but be aware of this stuff. It, it will make you stand out and it'll, you'll be glad that you did it that you took that extra time, they'll be impressed. They won't be offended. And that's the biggest thing is that you don't want to offend anybody um, by, by getting their gender wrong, getting their identity wrong, um, and then make sure you proofread. In regards to, I guess, finding the, whether it's a, a man or a woman or um, whatever they identify as, is it, um, would it be possible to just like always go for the first and last name and not necessarily look for the Mr. or, or a uh, Miss? That's Mrs. a safe way, but business letters usually do the dear Mr. or Ms. They okay. usually do that. So um, it would be preferable to do it that way. Oh, one thing I didn't put on here, do not use a template of a cover letter. And why, why, do, why do you think I'm saying that? Why is it not a good idea to use a template? 
uh, probably because other applicants might be using the same template yep. and they're seeing the same thing. Yep, I was at an S SPJ conference a few years ago, and you know, whenever there's anything about internships, that's the session that I gravitate toward, and um, and I pick up some new things every now and then. And somebody said that, yeah, you know, I I've seen that template over and over and over, and you would think that, God, really? But yeah, if they're if they are the hiring manager, the recruiter, they're seeing cover letters all day long. So write it from scratch, write it from the heart. And if you really, really want that internship or job um, a whole lot, if, if it's just calling your name, write it from scratch, absolutely. Um, you know, why do, you know, I, you're, you're, you know, CBS too, because I love legacy media. You know, you don't use the word love, but you know, legacy media is my thing or if it's some, you know, Buzzfeed, oh yeah, you know, I like, you know, more, you know, startup stuff, um, or, um, you know, in, any kind of edgy, more, um, you know, edgy media, um, but let them know that you, you know their company. And that's what I meant by show them you've done your homework as well. Um, because if you say in your cover letter, you've been watching, channel 11 since you were a little kid and then in the interview they say oh um who's your favorite reporter and you sit there like uh then you're out um i just saw that um that same thing talked about at a fox um uh, webinar a few weeks ago about um internships um the recruiter said she she will ask that question oh well what's our you know oh you've been watching us for that long what's what's your favorite show um i don't know <laughs> and you know of course you could be nervous but um but but you can't fake it they'll they'll figure it out you know fake fans will <laughs> will be revealed um absolutely so any other questions Also, students are e able to email you if they have any other questions as well, correct? Yeah, so let me put that in here. But like I said, this next week is, this is just crunch time for me and everybody else. So if it's not urgent, it, you know, yeah, you'd like me to look at your resume, but you're not applying to anything right now or right now with a deadline, then just hold off, make a note to yourself. And then I will be able to breathe a lot easier. Uh, my last final I'm giving is on the 14th. So it's pretty, it's, it's almost as late as it could be. Um, so, uh, but after that, I'll have a lot more free time. I love looking at resumes. And you know what? I have really um, hardly ever found a resume that didn't have something that probably should have been corrected on it. So just kind of letting you know. Um, and it's not that I'm gonna pick at, I'm gonna be nitpicky, I've got to find something on this. No, most of the time it's like, uh-oh, that was a typo, or oh, hmm, that wasn't necessarily the best thing, way to word it. Um, does anybody have community college experience? I do. Okay, that should, did, was it journalism related? Yes. It should be on there, on your resume. Hopefully it's there, good. If anybody went to community college and they didn't have journalism experience, then they would just have it under education that they, you know, got, uh, if they just, if you just attended Pierce and you did not take any journalism classes, eh, I don't know, you know, you might want to say when you attended, but, um, you know, don't say you got an AA if you didn't really get an AA, um, because that, that could come back to bite you as well. Um, Awesome. I know that you do have to go. Well, I, it's okay. I was trying to get, I, this exercise class started at six and I was trying to cancel it, but I can't find the link anyway. So don't worry. We can keep going here. That's fine. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't know why this is so bizarre. I can't even find it. Um, yeah. So don't worry about it. I rarely, rarely am a no show. So I don't think they're gonna, they're not gonna mind. And maybe I didn't even sign up. <laughs> um, that could be my problem. So anyway, I'll keep going. Don't worry about it. 
Um, I do have a question on the cover letter. I feel like for cover letters, for me, it kind of like stumps me when I'm trying to think of things to write um, without kind of like reiterating things that are on my resume. Mm -hmm. um, so how would, how would you like, I guess, start a cover letter would be a good starting point, like talking about something. You could just jump right into it um, and uh, you know, do not, I, I think you shouldn't start it like I am applying to XYZ, you know, internship. Um, now they know that, they know you're applying. S um, grab them like a lead. Um, you know, I've, I've been into journalism, you know, ever since I was in middle school, um, something like that. Uh, you want to express your passion for journalism, not that you're just wanting a, an internship or a job, but, but more than that. And, and think about what you bring to the table also. That should be in there somewhere, maybe not starting off. But um, I think a little anecdotal story is always good at the beginning. Um, and, you know, I, I knew I wanted to be a journalist from, you know, from the, from the second that, um, I don't know, I was, I was walking in downtown LA and in front of the courthouse and I saw all these news cameras huddled around somebody. Um, I, I knew that's where I wanted to be just making this up, but, uh, just grab them right, right from the beginning. Um, those first few words are really important. Do not start it with, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is, no, you've got to prove that you can write. This is a writing and a communications um, industry. So prove that you can write with that cover letter. It could end up being, I'm just thinking aloud, it could be based on your summary that you have on, um, I think it's a summary, on LinkedIn, that's what you call it, um, the little description of you, but I wouldn't really copy and paste that because they may have already seen that on LinkedIn. But if you wanna be inspired by what you wrote on LinkedIn, but keep it short. It does not need to go on and on. Two or three paragraphs is fine, but it's to help, kind of embellish and bring to life that resume. And maybe you could talk about one of the most challenging stories you've ever covered. One of the most gratifying stories that you've ever covered. You know, that's a possibility. What if, um, um, would it be weird to kind of like talk about I was, um, I was caught in a, like, a riot earlier in one of the Black, Black Lives Matter, like, protests that turned into, like, a riot quickly with Savannah, and um, we were both, like, shot at with, like, rubber bullets, and tear gas was everywhere. Would that be kind of, like, an in a story to bring up? Yeah, I would. Okay, because yeah. that was such, like, a turning point for, like, my, personally for me, for journalism, so... I felt like that it's just like every time I go out to a protest, I just think of that person, like that moment. I, I think that'd be great to talk about. Don't though make it sound like you were traumatized by the, by what happened and that you have PTSD. Yeah. Okay. So if you do, um, you know, that I'm, that's, that's unfortunate, but um, uh, don't come out and say I was traumatized or, um, you know, I had nightmares. <laughs> uh, don't, don't do that. Um, cause they're going to think, okay, then she can't handle this job. But if, if that was the moment when you knew, wow, I wanted to be out here. Why? I wanted to be out here, um, accurately capturing what was happening. Um, don't use that cliche, giving voice to the voiceless. That's a, totally a cliche, <laughs> but if you want to say something to that, um, it, uh, you know, not uncovering untold stories, but uh, if you want to say something to, to let them know that you want to get out there 
and report those stories, not just be quoting the same old politicians that are always quoted. Okay. Yeah, um, I, that would that would be really good. And hey, if you don't have any experience like that, then that's totally fine too. Uh, maybe you just like being uh, the first one to know something. Um, that that's something that really appealed to me as as a student journalist. I was the first one or one of the first people to know something. Um, even when I was covering city council meetings and there was hardly anybody in the audience, of course, and they weren't being televised live. And I'm sitting there and they're just like, you know, spending millions of dollars right and left. And that gives me a charge to think that, wow, I, and then I have that responsibility to accurately report that. Um, that's what I enjoy about um, journalism. And also all the people that you're gonna meet that nor regular people don't get to meet. I've spent two nights in a fire station all night long. <laughs> the average person can't do that. Um, so I've, I've had some, you know, I've been to the coroner's office. Um, I walked by bodies. Um, I've seen some things that really <laughs> stuck in my head for a long time. Um, uh, but that's what I like about journalism. And I would probably put something like that in my, in my cover letter. Um, I had a question. So yeah. I applied for an internship with the LA Times and they had me submit a cover letter as well as a personal essay. And so I wrote about that experience for my personal essay. Mm. I've okay. never had to do like a personal essay before for like an application. So would you be able to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that's right. They do have that personal essay, but then they also have the cover letter. Yeah, they had both. So I had to submit my resume, cover letter, and personal essay. And then the personal essay had to be only a page long. It couldn't be longer. Yeah, so we had, um, did you go to the um, the LA Times? Uh, we, we had a little meeting with Angel, um, not her last name, Jennings, um, from the LA Times. Did you go to that by any chance? I did not because I don't think I heard about it. Okay. Um, oh, here, I'm just looking at my notes. Yeah, it was, oh, you know what? It wasn't in, we did, it, I don't think it was in, um, what you call it, uh, Monday Memo. Um, it was more geared toward the students on the sundial. Um, but hang on, hold on, wake up, sleepy computer. Okay. By the way, um, not to discourage you, but um, they get a thousand applications for 14 positions, if you didn't already know that. A thousand. That's like, oh my God. Um, and here it is. Strongest personal statement circles back to journalism. Deeply personal. Tell me about your life. The moment when you knew you wanted to be a journalist, I knew that stuck in my head from somewhere, um, talk about your hardships or your privilege. So that's what Angel Jennings, had, had, that was her advice for the uh, personal statement. Um, personal statements is where you're going to show your writing flair. Cover letter under one page, makes the case why, uh, for why you are the best person for the internship. So you can, I, so you can see the difference. The personal statement is, is gonna be more deeply personal, uh, tell me about your life, but the cover letter, that's where it may, you may come into, you know, I've, I've had one internship, I've had two internships, and I've, or I've won awards. Um, uh, you know, I'm ready for this position. They're similar, but they are different. The personal statement is just, what's, what are you all about? What, um, and, and why are, why are you drawn to journalism? Um, did you already submit that? I did. Uh, the deadline was November 15th. Yeah, that's right. November 15th. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, and she had said that the strongest applicants have had a previous internship, but you can still apply, um, but you have to be ready to do stories right off the bat. 
So, um, you know, so see how it goes. That is, you know, it's a paid internship, 1750 an hour. Um, it's a highly competitive. It's really high. Oh, what's that? The pay? It's so high for an internship. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, minimum wage in LA County? I mean, it's a little bit more than that, but. I think it's $15, I think. Let's see. Yes, very good. It went to $15 an hour on July 1st. So with a, with a, I think it's a staff over um, 20 people or 25 people that work there. Oh, oh, for that $15 price? Yeah. Um, or uh, Yeah, right. So in the daily, the LA Times would definitely be that. So yeah, so it's a little bit over um, mm -hmm. and it's, um, 700 it's about 700 dollars a week so that's kind of cool um other questions oh and andre it said don't tell them what they already know that you mean in the the cover letter you're referring to yeah so you want to say i am yeah. a senior at csun okay thank you very much <laughs> we know that we can read we read your resume um i mean i'm being a little you know snide here but um, that's, that's the impression they get. It's like, well, okay, I know that. Don't waste my time. Tell me more about you. Um, you know, it could be, you know, I, I thought I, um, you know, initially I wanted to be a police officer, but I decided that I'd rather be on the other side and reporting on crime and, and, why you think that's important, um, why you want to report on a particular topic. But don't be careful though, don't get too narrow so that they think you only want to write about a particular topic. Because you're going to be writing about everything when it's either at that internship or at your first full-time job, you got to be ready to do everything and anything. I have covered funerals. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, you know, I've uh, all sorts of written obituaries, um, covered a plane crash once in Camarillo, driving down the 101 at about 90 miles an hour. Thank God we didn't end up getting an accident um, trying to get there. Um, but that's what happens when a plane goes down just about an hour before deadline. <laughs> You're going to get there as fast as you can. Um, so other, other questions? I don't want to keep up most of your night. So, um, does anybody have any like questions for Professor Bluestein before she goes? Because she is super awesome and she's very knowledgeable. Oh, so no, thank you. you. You are though, like, I feel like I've learned you, this class was very helpful for me. Oh, the internship class, you mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I definitely feel like it opened, especially the assignments that you oh, had good. us do, they were very creative. So I feel like that definitely opened up a lot of uh, different things in my mind. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. That's great. I, um, uh, I want the, for 494 class to to really help polish you all and and you know if there's any rough edges there um i really want you to shine because when it comes down to it ev just about everyone who is applying for that job has a bachelor's degree if if that is the minimum qualifications according to that job um, posting so how do you make yourself stand out how are you how is your resume going to shine and how are you going to shine in the job um, interview and then once you get to the job um, you want to stay at your at any job hopefully at least a year unless you know unless there's layoffs and they you know run out of money and you have to leave but um, you don't want to be so unhappy with your job after three months that you have to leave or god forbid you get fired um, that's a problem. So, um, so you've got to be ready to, um, to work. And that, that's part of what the class is. I really, I wish um, all of our students could have the AEE part of the one unit part of that class, because I, I think it would um, really help them be successful. 
Um, but hopefully you all will be able to join me at some point in um, the 494 class. Um, this is an incredible opportunity now, this time, to get an internship. Um, you, it, uh, you've got the whole country open to you now um, with all these remote internships. Um, Sophia is doing her internship in person at ABC7. No, you're not? No, it's all, it's all remote. It is all remote. I thought you were going in a little bit. I wish. <laughs> okay. Okay. So good. I had, I had dinner with my boss one night, mm -hmm. but that was it. He, oh, with, uh, with David Ono? I had dinner with David one night and we talked about our special because it was literally the following day. Uh-huh. So we were like, we had dinner because it was, I was pretty much helping him. It's me and Simran. Um, and that was very stressful, the first special, but um, that's the only time that I actually saw him. <laughs> wow. Okay. So it's totally remote. So wow. uh, for those of you who, you or friends um, who don't have transportation, you don't have reliable transportation, this is your time right now, this spring and this summer to go for a remote um, internship because it's no longer an issue um, where you're living, where the employer is located. Um, there's one student in the internship class this semester is um, doing obviously a remote internship uh, for a PR. She's doing PR for a company in Texas. She couldn't have done that. I, I wouldn't have allowed it under normal circumstances. We never used to allow remote internships because I, I felt that um, it wasn't in the student's best interest, that they needed to be in the office, they needed to be in the studio. But now, since everything has changed, employers have put a lot more thought into remote internships than they used to. It used to be like, oh, great, this is wonderful. I'll just email this person, do this, and then I'll get it back. Okay, great, you did this. Okay, great, here's your next assignment. Um, but employers now because now they're all kind of competing against each other so they've they've got to have a good remote internship or students might not even apply yeah there's a few interns at abc7 right now that actually they didn't even know they were remote until we went over like um training and mm -hmm. the payroll uh -huh. part of like it and one of the girls is in washington DC, I think. And then another one is in like Delaware. Oh, wow. And they had no idea until like they went over payroll and they're like, oh, wait, we have to like tax differently if you're. Oh, you're huh. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so, interesting. Yeah. Huh. So I, I don't know. Disney, I guess, didn't tell them, but um, that that's really interesting because they were the ones who got the internships. So wow. it might be a little more competitive now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it may very well. Um, so if any of you are interested in the internship class, let me know, especially for spring. In summer, the way we do it, we don't offer Journalism 494. Uh, this is the way we have done it in the past years. And I think we'll probably do it this summer, I'm anticipating. Um, the com comms department offers comms 494. And so um, if you want to take um, the 494 class in the summer, if you have not taken it yet, um, if, if you don't take it in spring and you want to do it in summer, then you still need to get cleared by me. We use the journalism paperwork and then you will officially be enrolled in comms 494 with their professor and we will count it as the equivalent of journalism 494. But that's just for summer. And the reason why is because they were struggling to get enough students in summer. We were struggling to get enough students and so we made this arrangement. So we just kind of came together. But oddly enough, in spring, we're taking their students this time. Um, so we, we switched roles. Um, but I think it's good because that way, at least the comm students who have internships can still um, get college credit. And on that note, uh, before I stop talking, um, if you are ever doing an unpaid internship, you must be earning college credit. It is illegal under federal labor law to do an unpaid internship and not get paid. I, the easy way to remember it is you either need to get cash or you need to get credit. So you need to get paid or you need to get college credit. 
Now, if you are getting paid, if you're doing a paid internship, you can still enroll in 494, in Journalism 494. That's great. More power to you. But if you are doing an unpaid internship, you must find a way to get college credit. If you have, um, if you haven't met the prereq for 494, just email me and I'll give you a couple different options. They're, they're not as good of options, but um, it's 494, but at least it would be a couple ways. Um, it, there's an online CSU class that costs $200, um, internship class. There's um, a, um, or, or you could take a, a class through a uh, community college. Neither option will count toward your journalism electives. And both I have a will, question. Both will cost you about $200. So that's kind of the downside. Yes, Beatrice. Um, I know that international students have maybe like a year to do an internship or to find a job. Yes. Um, would you recommend me to start this year in my last semester or after I graduate? When will your last semester be? This coming spring? No. No, maybe it's spring of 2022. Yes, it will be, right, because you're just going to be 110. Um, hmm. Well, it, if you could do some internships before you graduate, that is going to put you in a better place to be able to get a job in that first year after you graduate. Now, whether or not you can do an internship, I'm not... I'm not totally sure on that um, um, with, you know, international students and all that. Um, I, don't I think this year is for uh, internships and jobs. So I don't know how should I use it. Oh, so that, that you first, that year after you graduate, you could either do an internship or a job. Yeah, because I'm going to have like an, Oh my God. Like CSUN can authorize for me to do this. They can help me with the paperwork and et cetera. Uh-huh. So. If you can do an internship or two before you graduate, that's going to be better. Um, and so check with the international students office and just ask them, Hey, if I get an internship in summer of um, 21 and it's paid or it's unpaid, um, can I do that? Am I, am I allowed to do that? Um, it might be up to the employer because there might be more paperwork they have to do. So some employers might want to say, yeah, sure. Other employers might say, no, we, we don't want to, we only want, um, you know, U.S. citizens or whatever. Um, but at, start with the, um, uh, yeah, go ahead and, and stop recording. Um,